All right, here we go with another deck tech. Today, I'm going to be doing a deck tech on. Deck I'm calling Reckless Jess Skies. It's a blue red with a little bit of white Flyers deck. Mostly built around favorable wins, but with also a built in combo finish for those games when beating down just isn't getting there. Start with creatures. Got a four of Siren Storm Tamer. I quickly have fallen in love with this card. The more people play Settle the Wreckage, the better this card gets. Whatever reason, when Wither Wizards of the Coast printed Settle the Wreckage, they said exile all attacking creatures, target player controls. And instead of just saying exiling all attacking creatures. I guess they didn't want Settle the Wreckage to be too good in Two-Headed Giant, so you can only pick one player, but that gives the added benefit of the Siren Storm Tamer being able to counter that spell with a blue mana and sacrificing. So you swing with four, five, six guys, have an open blue mana, they settle the wreckage, you spend a blue mana, sacrifice this, the rest of the team still gets in, and you lost a 1-1, one, one, maybe a 2-2. Two, two. This is just such a good hedge against that. I got a 2 of Skyship Plunder. I'm running an energy sub theme in the deck, so it has a lot of potential to give me extra energy counters. 4 of Reckless Fireweavers. Fireweavers are in here because Thopters are artifacts and get to peen for extra damage. It allows for a combo finish with some of the cards that I have later. Four Whirler Virtuoso. Three mana. Comes in, makes three energy. Can make a Thopter or two before it goes away. Also, good for chump blocking. People don't think you're going to chump block with it. They think you value it higher than I do in this deck. This is only a Thopter engine. If it comes in, goes away, that's cool. Two of Experimental Aviator, and two of Maverick Thopterist. They fill the exact same role. The Experimental Aviator has the benefit of also being a flyer, so it gets benefit from the favorable wins. But the Maverick Thopterist coming down as a 2-2 itself and being able to cheat it into play with the other Thopters that might have been made earlier gives that extra advantage to where you might be able to play both of them in the same turn. Moving on to instants and sorceries. Playing red and blue, running an energy theme. Pretty straightforward. Four Harness Lightning, four Glimmer of Genius. Kill a creature. Sometimes you're just casting it and then doing no damage to the creature just to be able to make an extra Thopter or two. And Glimmer, draw you more cards. Straightforward in a lot of decks. Let's get to my other spells. Favorable Winds. Love the artwork on this card. Gives all flyers plus one plus one. I tried doing a straight meat and potatoes. Here's 22 cheap flyers and favorable winds decks. But typically when the favorable winds would come down, I'd only have two or three on the board. And it just wasn't flashy enough. I was spending two mana and doing two extra damage. Yay, sweet. I ended up, I was running a deck with favorable wins in Raider's Wake and I just preferred the Raider's Wake. I'd much rather have them discard a card and take two damage as opposed to giving two or three creatures plus one plus one. But in this deck, being able to get out of control with tokens, the favorable wins gives a much better advantage. I'm dropping this for two and I'm you know, bumping 8 or 10 tokens. Going to Procession, running a 3 of, lets me double up on tokens, my token generators, and can get really out of hand with Sahili Rai, which I'm only running 2. That could probably take a third one. Mavic Thopterist, and the Experimental Aviator. If you have an Anointed Procession on the board and a Reckless Fireweaver, you could almost one-shot your opponent's down, and then you're still left with a whole bunch of flyers at the end that are probably two, two, or three threes at that point. Giving it that extra avenue of attack 
can help it close out games that otherwise wouldn't have a chance to. You're not so one-dimensional. You don't just automatically fold to the fumigate. To the settle the wreckage. Let's get over to the mana base. Four Aether Hub, because I'm running an energy theme. One Desert of the Fervent and one Desert of the Mindful. In case I start flooding out. Four Evolving Wilds. Two Glacial Fortress and Irrigated Farmlands. I only really need one white source. So the four Evolving Wilds can get me one Plains. Otherwise, Glacial Fortress and Irrigated Farmlands can either play for their blue mana sources or be cycled away. Or of Highland Lake. If you got the money, go ahead and drop this, the Spire Bluff canals in. I traded them away when they got close to nine something a tick back before rotation because the blue, red blue lists were good and surprisingly they still are. You lose about a half a step with these, but the combo finish and the extra damage from the Reckless Fire Weaver kind of makes up that ground. But again, if you got the Spire Buff Canals, just play them. They're better. Got the extra money, drop it. Four islands, four mountains, and a plains. Nothing too fancy here. Alright, moving on to the sideboard. Two Forsake the Worldly. I came across the deck that was playing Trespassers Cursed, and I got hit with two of them game one, and it's like, there's literally no way I can win from here. Because every time I, a creature came into play, I'd lose more life, he'd gain more life, and I'm sure that I eventually beat him low with the, with two favorable wins out, but it was just a slog. So I brought in two Forsake the Worldlies to deal with troublesome enchantments just to make sure I got something in the pocket. And it can cycle away if I do bring them in and then they board out whatever enchantments or artifacts that I need to kill. Also running two Abrades to bring in when I need more creature removal. Ramen Up Red, God Pharaoh's Gift type decks, because it can also destroy an artifact. Two Unsummons, deal with bigger creatures that the Abrades and the Harness Lightnings can't deal with. Two Negates for control matchups. Approach of the Second Sons. Confiscation coups to try to steal me a god because I'm too cheap to put him in myself. Maybe I can steal the hostage taker after he exiles one of my guys and cast a creature out from underneath of it. That would be hilarious. One of commit to memory. This is mostly a relic from when I was testing. I was effectively testing two different versions of this deck. One that was going the Thopter token theme and the other one that was going Locust God locust tokens and this was you know a wheel effect get me a bunch of flying insects just to be able to pound in face the deck really didn't come together there wasn't enough to get me through two sorcerer spyglass to deal with specific planeswalker matchups that i need to shut down or to deal with the a god that's going to give me problems. And two rampaging Ferocidons. Decks with a lot of life gain can give this deck fits. So after I can get, build out a reasonable board and then drop these, it's not too bad. Downside is if I do go off of the, try to go off the combo kill with this on the field, it's probably going to kill me first. There isn't a lot of cards that say people can't gain life on them in standard, and this is about the best option we got. Still iffy on whether it's worth it, but it does give me a chance versus cat decks, versus horse decks, and the like. Well, that's the deck. Thanks for watching. If you like the deck, there'll be a link to the list. In the description below, you can also find links to my Twitter account. You can follow me there, at GeekLukeG. This is Couch Troll Brewing.